Hi, and welcome everyone to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed podcast with Bonnie Seratori. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Seratori is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. You can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com, including all episodes of Consciousness Unleashed podcast. Today is another edition of the Two Shamans and a Muggle uh, <laughs> special episodes that we do for Consciousness Unleashed. But it's actually um, a Chris edition because the past two that we did was with Sarah Ellingworth, who is also on Bonnie's team. But this time we have Chris Williams with us, who will be, he is the instructor of Foundations, which is going on right now. And he will be teaching Awaken the Shaman, which will be coming up very soon. So Chris, um, thank you for being here and welcome. Um, Bonnie, would you like to introduce Chris? Like, how did he, how did yeah, he get me, on your team and everything? Yes, Go ahead. Chris, Chris, man, this guy, I love this guy. I'm so happy to have him on the team. Uh, I mean, Chris and I met like back in what, 2015, 2016, somewhere. And I met was 2015. And he came as a client and clearly it changed his life. He was in school to be an acupuncture, which he did finish. But if you'll notice, where is he working? <laughs> Yeah. So Chris, I, he's amazing. I'm, I'm very proud of him and I'm thrilled to have him on the team and as a teacher, as a healer, as a shaman, you know, and, a, and the, the way he teaches people just love him. They adore him. He has a way of really anchoring in the information, the teachings, so people really understand it and get it. And he's just a, an awesome being, professional man and I can't say enough good things about Chris. So let's just welcome Chris and let him just be who he is and just share some of his knowledge and wisdom with this particular podcast. Oh, thank you for having me. And it's my total privilege and pleasure to be here as always with you guys. I do want to give a little outline for today. Um, so we're actually going to be talking about shamanic journeying today specifically in this podcast episode, but there's so much more to shamanism and um, what Bonnie does than just what we're touching upon today. So if you're on YouTube, please subscribe because we're gonna have a lot more video content so you can learn a lot more about Awaken the Shaman and Chris as well. I just wanna put that out there that today's episode, we're gonna be focusing a little bit more on one particular topic within this bigger topic. Um, if you wanna learn more, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay, so Chris, my first question about this is, um, I've heard you and Bonnie talk about um, shamanism and how it's you know, different from psychic abilities where psychics could view things and see the energies, but they can't necessarily move the energies. And uh, But I do know that there are a lot of other energy healing techniques out there that they can do some of that work. They can move things around and, and create change within a person's energy and consciousness. So I want to know what the difference is between shamanism and maybe other types of more popular healing techniques. Mm. I think it's a nice distinction you've made between sort of moving energy and sort of picking up stuff psychically. And inside the realm of moving energy, I mean, these arts, there is a lot of territory there and, and people doing different things, you know, and Bonnie's work is very different to most of the energy healing that's out there. And it's got a shamanic influence. It's more than shamanism. It's sort of actually an arising of awakening um, and divine consciousness as healing that's kind of it's 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 you can't it's it's something new it's something emerging out of divine intention um but in terms of shamanism shamanism i would say is is different from kind of just moving energy around in that people who are shamans have a genuine capacity to contact and work with and clear out other beings and spirits shamanism is very much engaged with working with um, the spirits of the land, the ancestors, the spirits of beings from all different kinds of dimensions, some of which might not, shouldn't be here. <laughs> and shamans act as gatekeepers for a community or uh, a piece of land or a place. They are kind of interdimensional bouncers and they're the people you call to address imbalances in the relationships between different spirits and people and the humans that are living there. So I think that's the differentiation is that they are very capable of being able to walk between worlds and and work with the beings that live in different places um rather than just moving clearing out emotional energy which is also an important part of the work but 
um, a lot of people who are moving energy aren't really able to work with uh, powerful beings or get beings to do, you know, what they're to do what they're telling them. Yeah. Do you want to add anything to that, Bonnie? In our work, see, we we are not your typical shaman, and Chris is right. It's like what we do is so much greater, much more beyond, simply because we're not just using our own abilities. We are literally plugging into creation itself and being having the guidance and the the ability to utilize the frequencies of the light itself, of creation, of God, consciousness, and um, the ability to track and find the source of an angst or a reason why someone is having their experience. It's like, you know, we go so much more beyond your typical shamanism practices. And, you know, for me personally, the, the, the ability to find, like I remember when I first started teaching psychic classes, students would ask me a question and I was, even before they answered the, before they finished their question, I was already finding the answer. So, the ability to track and find no matter where that answer comes from, no matter what time, space, dimension, universe, galaxy, black time, reality, black hole, parallel frequency, realms, all existent, didn't matter. We can find it. And by finding it, then we get to the crux of everything and unravel. And then it basically clears an issue completely. So you never have to come back and learn that lesson again. But yes, our, our work is different. I mean, it sounds like everything else out there, but it is not. It's so much deeper, much more profound, life-changing in an instant. So I think it's important people understand. You know, you're not just, okay, we're going to work with some of your emotion. You got an emotion, we'll clean that up. No, we're ending it. We're ending that dance that you're doing with other souls and also the trauma dramas that we play out. By ending and getting to the core, we end that dance so you're no longer having to butt heads or hate each other or kill each other or think you're in love with each other or whatever those dances are we're doing game over soul dance done move on to the next lesson okay that's pretty much it so bonnie i think it's really interesting that you're making this distinction between your work and like other work out there including other shamanic techniques but you don't always call yourself shaman i know we say that when uh, we do talk about awaken the shaman and this podcast we talk about two shamans and a muggle but um you you make that distinction between your work and what's out there but i i'm really curious about like what really is a journey and why would people care why would people want to do that yeah absolutely and bonnie's the person who taught me how to journey so i after i give my answer we should check back in and 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 see see how i'm doing but also get her comments because bonnie really bonnie really um bonnie really taught me to be able to do that which is just and it opened up all of this world to me, all of this world of sort of consciousness and energy. And I began to learn for myself. So I think that's one of the big and really um, special features of learning to be able to journey is that you you can you can go out anywhere that you can, anywhere in the cosmos, anywhere in time and space, and begin to learn from begin to learn from life, begin to learn from different beings, begin to learn from different kind of flavors of energy and consciousness. It's like being an explorer. And it gives you sort of, it it brings the learning, it makes you in charge of your own learning process, and really develops your consciousness and energy. So one thing was, you know, I suddenly could 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 develop the capacity to go and go and travel to different places and learn different energy techniques from different beings but also the act of journeying stretches open your consciousness and energy you need to develop your energy system and your consciousness and awareness to be able to do this and the idea of i mean we it begins to wake us up a bit too because we're living through these sort of bodies as if yep this is who i am and i'm my body and i'm here and now and then um, from the point of view of Bunny's work, all of that's arising inside divine awareness. All of that's arising out of pure divinity. And uh, one of the qualities of divinity, along with light and love, is awareness. All of this is happening inside of just divine awareness. And from that point of view, everything's just here. There's no over there. There's no I'm here and you're there. It's like all of that's just one thing arising out of pure divinity. And so from that kind of, um, from the layer of awareness that Bonnie's trying to wake people up to, all of, this is a, all of this is available right here and now. Your awareness can go instantly anywhere inside of divine mind because it is that, 
it is that that's that's what we are um and you can contact any energy and expression of life that's ever existed that's just mind-blowing and it begins to wake you up from the me i small bubble that we're living out of as if it's real and begins to stretch open your your awareness and your psychic capacity it really honed my psychic muscles so my tracking i feel one of the one of the reasons bonnie's teachings and the people that train with her get so good at tracking is the journeying because you it's like very specifically being able to navigate and track different frequencies way out in these really extreme places and then when you do that with a human being in front of you you're working on it's really easy because you've been practicing going way out and tracking all of these very nuanced places and dimensions and suddenly someone sat in front of you and you're like boop yep there's your past life wound that's how it relates to your childhood that's what's going on behind it those are the beings hooked in and it's it comes out of this stretching this muscle and bonnie just lives in that world that's my sense is that for bonnie that's normal and natural um, but for people who aren't living, who aren't open to these layers of life, it just, it's like, what? And then by sitting with her and training with her and, and doing these courses, they develop the ability to do that. It just opens up, it opens up the world and your ability to learn from it just in an extraordinary way. So I really credit it with developing all of my tracking and, and, and capacity is, is just learning journey from Bunny. Yeah. Would you say that this is the uh, program that you would take if you're, Maybe you have abilities, but you want to open it up more and then it yes. does it bridge well into foundations. Can you talk about that? So what you're talking about now with tracking and journeying, you will learn that in Awaken the Shaman. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So this is this is a this is a big part of the Awaken the Shaman program. And it works as a fantastic bridge for people going into foundations. I have students in foundations right now who have taken Awaken the Shaman and they are already they're already at you no, know, they're already at page three or the letter H out of the alphabet and everyone else is at page one or letter A. They their their system has been really prepared for it. They can do, they can functionally do the things that we're trying to encourage students to do. Now, if you don't take Awaken the Shaman, you can still learn to do that in foundations, but it's just a fantastic bridge in. It's a fantastic bridge in. And, and I think it really works well um, as a way of exploring that in a in a really um in a really nice learning environment where yeah, we're really just looking at developing those skills. So could any muggle take Awaken the Shaman be able to journey and, and track? Yeah, that's been my experience. Everyone who's come to Awaken the Shaman has has had experiences of journeys and been able to do that. So um it's like any skill. It's 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 like any muggle skill, right? It's like riding a bicycle. It just takes a bit of practice, but then it's like, okay, now you're now you're riding the bicycle. It, if you have a willingness to learn, that's all it takes. And that was my that was my my big takeaway from learning with Bonnie is the sense that you can do it. <laughs> she was just really clear about it. She was like, "You can do this," and I was like, "Wow, I could do this." And then, but you know, she was she that was that's her position is if you you just do it. It's not it's like the Yoda thing. There is no try. If you want to do it, you do it. That's that's the teaching. And 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 if people can really embrace that you can do far more than you think you can. You can do things you have no idea how you would do them even, but something in you knows, the divine inside of you knows how to do all of this stuff. I feel like Bonnie has something to share with all that. Well, I mean, Chris is right on. It's like, here's the thing, people, we, we, we've we already been doing things in past lives. Like, like for example, in my world, here here's my training on shamanism for real. This was it. I'm in Hawaii, I have a, a, a business partner who I brought on and we were doing workshops together. We had a client come and she was, Bonnie, this woman needs a soul retrieval. I'm like, what? She goes, don't worry about it because she already knows me. She goes, don't worry, I'm going to do some drumming. You're going to go find these parts, do whatever you got. And so that's what happened. So the woman comes in, she said, she lays down and Molly says, okay, Bonnie, there's a piece of her that's been taken. You need to go find it. So she started drumming. And so I laid down next to her and I knew, I knew exactly what to do. I went and found these pieces. I did the trade, brought her back. And that was my training. Okay. And look what I do now. Okay. So <laughs> I knew that I already knew how to do these things before. And that's what's happening. We've, if we're drawn to this kind of work, if we're drawn to energy healing, shamanism, helping others, I guarantee you, we've got history 
lifetimes of doing this kind of work in a different way, different capacity, different time and space, different modalities, but it's in us. So the people that are drawn to take these programs, they are, that's already in them. And what Chris is doing, he's awakening the shaman, okay? He's awakening the shaman that's already there. And I do want to say something too about why we don't really use the word shamanism, because for one thing, we are so beyond your typical normal, what people would understand as shamanism to be. The other reason is I remember many years ago, you know, 20 years ago, and it became a big thing. All of a sudden, everybody's a shaman. You could take a class for a weekend and be a shaman. You know, truthfully, I'm going to tell you straight up, it takes years, years, right, Chris? It takes years to be able yeah. to do what we do. Years, okay? It doesn't mean that, okay, you take the program and yes, you've got, you start, but you're just starting. You're just learning how to work energy, how to find things. So as you get better and better, you just, you know, you, you learn more, you get more potent, more powerful. And, you know, like even with you, Chris, you know, for you, when you first started, of course, it felt a little awkward or whatever, but now it's like natural, right? I mean, you're like, you're professional, you know? Oh, yeah. and you, we, you guys, we don't see back then, back then when I first, this was in the early nineties when I first started doing the shamanic stuff and Back then, I even when I was teaching the pro, teaching shamans and all that, I would do the drumming, we do the altered state, the breath, all kinds of stuff to go into an altered state. Game over, people. We don't have to do any of that. All you do is take in your awareness, boom, here we go. We are there in an instant, in a moment. Okay. So the old ways are done. I need to just make sure you understand the old ways are done. We no longer have to do all these things to go into an altered state, ingest medicines, whatever. It's all about, boom, take our awareness, we have an intention, we're tracking, boom, we go. So this is new paradigm, and we are in the, the new paradigm. And so we teach new paradigm healing, which is also new paradigm shamanism, new, new paradigm energy healing, new paradigm emotional healing, all of it is new paradigm. I've always been cutting edge, leading edge for all healing modalities and that's just, you know, that's just my, my job in this lifetime is lead the way, bring people, bring people to new ways, faster ways, more potent, powerful, life-changing that we've never known before. Okay. I think this is a great time to have an actual experience of a journey for the audience. So is that okay, Chris, would you like to lead us yeah. on some type of journey? Great. That sounds good. That sounds good. And so we're going to do this in two parts. And if you're listening back to this, just join as best you can. And if you feel like you come, sometimes people, some part of their spirit begins to go. And then at other points, then they feel like that you might, you might have an experience where you suddenly wake up and you realize you've been somewhere, but you can't remember anything. You don't know what happened. Or you're in the journey and then somehow you, you're kind of, your, your awareness can't keep up with where your spirit's going. And you're kind of, you feel like you've hit a wall with it or you get really distracted. And that's all totally normal as part of the process of actually learning how to do this. So if that happens, don't worry about it. It's just normal. It's part of the training. And just come back to the come back to the journey. Come back to where I'm I'm pointing you with my voice and presence. And we do this in class all the time. Um, but we're going to do this in two parts. Um, and so let's give it a go. I'm just going to set the a little a little space for this to come through. And so be in your body. Be aware of your physical body here and now, where you are in time and space. And then begin to loosen that sense of time and space, arising into the present, the eternal present, the single moment. Begin to feel yourself called towards the light. Let your awareness begin to tune into the light, divinity outside of time and space, 
let your spirit begin to rise out of your physical form and identity and begin moving upwards outside your body. Let's begin move outside of this dimension, begin shifting out phase. And we're going up, we're going towards the light. We're passing through different subtle dimensions. We're beginning to move out of time, higher and higher, let go of all thought, all form, all energy, as pure awareness traveling towards the divine traveling towards the source of all being. Begin to take yourself higher and higher. We're almost there. We're passing, getting up to the eighth dimension of angelic realm in a moment. But we need to go beyond that to pure divinity. Letting all sensations of light go into the pure divine popping outside of all time and all space. <laughs> Just at the edge of the 10th dimension, and then we pop outside of that, outside of the bubble of reality into pure divinity. Begin to feel this complete brightness where there's no thought, no identity. Rest into this space. Remember who you are. When it's time to come back, breathe this light. Breathe this light. Take it with you. Begin to Align yourself with coming back to where you are in time and space. You need to come down through those subtle dimensions of being, coming home to your body, home to the life you need to live now. You're on this planet for a reason. Your path is here as a human. Feel yourself drawing down through the denser dimensions the structure of reality becoming a bit more uh, cohesive and dense. And then feel yourself coming back down your body. Pull all of your consciousness and energy that may have gone out with you back, 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 as if you're coming down through your crown or through your third eye into your body. Let yourself really come all the way in, into your bones. Feel your spirit begin to enter into the core of your bones, the bones of your body. Feel the beating of your blood in your body, your heartbeat, which is the heartbeat of the earth. This body is of the earth, and this is where we are, feeling your body, feeling your bones. And now we're going to go into a more shamanic journey taking ourselves into the realm of earth, into the realm of this manifest life. Let yourself begin to fall down as if through a deep cave, down, down, down into the earth, past all of this rock and earth, deep, 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 deep. And we are heading towards the core of the planet. The planet holds lots of wounding. It holds history, but we are going deeper. We're connecting with the being who lives in the core of the planet called Gaia. Let yourself fully drop all the way down into the luminous heart of Gaia. She's waiting there, giving life to all of us. Drop deeper still, letting go of all sense of where you are and dropping into the heart of the planet, the heart of Gaia. It's got a softness and a light. She's a divine being. And dropping down, 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 down to the core of Gaia, just recognize her as mother. She's going through her own awakening process. Recognize the core of the light in Gaia. 
this nurturing light. And ask Gaia, take me to a magical woods. Take me to the magical woods. Take me to the magical woods. And feel yourself being guided as if by these roots through the planet to a, a magical woods that exists halfway between fairy and our realm on the border of those places. Feel yourself traveling through these roots, coming up through the ground into this evergreen forest. This forest is full of life, full of beings, full of animals, berries, and it's alive. Feel the forest talking to itself. Hear the wind whispering through the trees. Hear the, the breathing of the trees. The whole forest is breathing together, all connected to its roots. Feel yourself being called to a particular tree and say hello from the deepest place in your heart. listening to the reply from the tree, its vibration and presence. Feel yourself align your spine with the spine of the tree. Feel the pulsing energy as it acts as an intermediary between heaven and earth, cosmic energy and Gaia life. Tune to its stillness. Feel yourself becoming tree-like. Feel the birds in your branches and the sun on your skin. Tuning back into the forest, feel for the lighter vibrations of the fairy beings who live here. Be very polite. They are somewhat skittish around humans now, but say hello. Don't eat any of their food until you get to know them. Just say hello. Feel their luminous spirit forms floating around you and share with them that you would like to know them better and walk with them as humans and fairies did in the past. they give you any gifts, ask that they are given with no strings attached and give them something from yourself. Give them magical food. If you know how to make that, call for the light to present as a magical offering for them. Call that place in the light that you went to to produce some kind of magical fruit for them and offer it to them. Don't drink or eat anything without making an equal exchange. This is one of the laws of fairy and keeps the relationship clean. Say goodbye to the fairies for now and take a last listen into the forest. Listen to the earth. Feel for the woodland creatures skittering through it. Remember this forest in your heart so that you can return any time you wish. And then go to a tree. Ask the tree to return you to the heart of Gaia. Feel yourself being pulled through its roots, traveling down, 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 through into Gaia, through all these pathways of the earth. The earth has meridians and earth pathways, just like we do. Feel yourself connect and say hello to the core of Gaia, the luminous place of love. She is trying to awaken through all the suffering that humans have projected onto the earth for a long time, but she's more than up to the task. Say goodbye for now and ask to return to your body. Feel yourself rising up through Gaia, through all of the earth and soil into your body, which is also made of Gaia. This is a Gaia body. Feel your flesh, feel the weight of your tissues, as you sit on your chair or bed or the ground, feel your skin surrounding your body, 
the air just around it. Feel your bones, feel your body breathing, breathing with prana and life energy. Let go of the journey. Begin to open your eyes and look at your hands. Recognize that you're here now in a body and that you just did a journey. Thank you so much for that, Chris. Chris, thank you for taking me there. <laughs> I felt like the tree was healing me. So that was a really interesting experience. It, it had a really strong presence that was really soothing and comforting for me. Um, that was really cool. And I like the interaction with the fairies. I've heard before people talk about you could talk to fairies and like they'll, they'll help you make money or something. <laughs> and then... But uh, when when you took us to this journey, you you were specifically emphasizing that you want to um, have a real relationship with them and 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 have that offering first. So that was a, that was great because everything I've heard before about like interacting with fairies, that I that part wasn't really spoke about, and I think that's really crucial to kind of understand. Like it, it's not just all about <laughs> taking. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. That was really cool. Yeah, that's an, a really interesting point because the the relationship between fairy and humans has become became very bad at a certain point. Humans humans became very asleep. I mean, Bonnie can speak to this a bit more than me because she, she her awareness has really gone into this. But humans became incredibly asleep for a period, and we began to have a very um, a very aggressive relationship with our environment and the magical beings that lived there. And even beings like magical sorcerers and practitioners would sometimes use fairies as, as, as sources of power for their rituals. And we did all sorts of stuff that really damaged our relationship with fairies. So we're trying to rebuild the relationship between humans and the other beings that live on earth and into a kind of harmony and, and really trying to repair some of the damage. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's part of the work. It's part of the responsibility of, of, of having, as you said, like a more balanced relationship and, and, but fairies are cool. Yeah. There's a lot we can learn from them because they're just, they've got a higher magical vibration and they can do some really cool stuff. So thanks for sharing. So, so, so Chris, that actually brings me into what actually happened when I went down there. Ah. So, so a couple of things happened. First, this one little fairy, she's like pulling me, showing me, I, she wanted me to do something. So I had to, it was helping her with her, her baby fairy. Okay. But then a bunch came and they like, come, come, come. So I came, I swear to you, it was like the heartbeat of fairyland was dead. I was to go yeah. for real. Okay. Yeah. So I knew, okay, got it. So what I did is I, I found tracking, tracking, finding what happened, what killed it, what devastated, what shut it down. And then it began to unravel very quickly. And then I got, and then I did like a staff on the, like the energy fields, like taking the staff and just like hitting the ground with that intention to wake it back up. And I had to do that several times, but the pulse, the heartbeat began to beat again light began to happen energy started coming back up into the earth itself so this will be interesting to see what starts to shift and change with that heartbeat of that particular dimension time space it's now back there's a pulse happening i can still see it i can feel it i can hear it there's an aliveness it's not it's not all the way back but it will be as it keeps beating but yeah it got shut down big time wow this that's what meant awesome. to be yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I was aware that fairy as a realm had kind of become kind of like it shifted out of phase with the earth in a kind of way like they pulled away because of the the suffering, the shutting down. And it feels like that might be starting to kind of heal that rift now from what you've done. It's yeah, really yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, no, that's, there's a major shift that's happened. That's good. Wow. I would have never thought about that, Chris. Never. That's awesome. See? That's divine, cool. yeah. The divine plan unfolding right here. Cool. Yeah. So, Chris, Awaken the Shaman is coming up soon. The registration will be open um, pretty soon for people to register. And do you want to talk a little bit about that? It's going to be a little bit different than how you normally teach it, right? It's going to be a little um, more extended, I believe, in terms of how many weekends it is. Could you talk about how um, it's laid out? Yes. So it's going to be in the in a we're going to try a different format, which has worked really well for intuitive view. So we're going to do it over six weeks. It's going to be a two hour class or a two and a half hour class. It will check the website on a Saturday. 
And then it's going to have pre-recorded lesson content where, you know, there'll be journeys, there'll be exercises and meditations for people to really learn beforehand. And then in class, it's going to be pure energy work, pure journeying, going to be really just going. But a lot of the teaching and information that needs to be given will be given in these bite-sized lessons. So basically, it's going to make the course more flexible, more open. It's going to be less demanding on time. But still, people are going to be able to really get these skills and just do a bunch of practice with it. So we're and it's going to because it's it's over six weeks it's going to have um a longer learning period to really get comfortable with it so it, it should be it's it's every time we teach in a new way it seems to develop the material too so we're going to see see how it plays out but i'm excited yeah it's a it's a structured course which takes you so what we just did is a sort of taste of learning to journey but we do a lot of practice being able to really refine the ability to do this to travel to different nature places to work with different animal spirits to be able to track energy and begin to move and heal energy in people to begin to find and track emotional energy and begin moving it that's sort of one of the core skills you learn in awaken the shaman the other core skill is is the journeying and getting really grounded getting really grounded getting your energy system really aligned for the work and then that bridges into foundations where it really things really take off and you know it's really it's it's a it's really an accelerated development so with with the foundations what bonnie was saying earlier is actually it, it does take years to really master these skills that is true but what i've seen from foundations is that it tends to open people up and bring them to a entirely new level very quickly so from there they can just refine it they've kind of got the thing that they need to work on and and then it's a question of just practicing and refining it. Um, but yeah, Awaken the Shaman is the core skills to be able to go and do that in foundations. And and it's a lot of fun. I really love teaching it because we get to do a lot of this kind of journeying and working with earth beings is the best. It's what I, it's what I do for fun. So this is like this is <laughs> cookies for me. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to share too that I've noticed that people who are very, very advanced and they have taken foundations, they still take away from the shaman even after that. And it still deepens their abilities and enhances their abilities too. So if you're somebody who's listening to this and you've had a lot of practice with maybe other healing techniques maybe you took foundations and apprentice with bonnie but you haven't taken awaken the shaman yet still i i recommend considering that did you want to share anything about that chris looks like you wanted to say something yeah no absolutely it tends to deepen all the classes just deepen where you're at but awaken the shaman in particular tends to deepen the tracking and journeying skills and we're working with because you know i look at it like this like Awaken the Shaman is really about being able to navigate this dimension of earth and humans here and now. Um, Foundations is more going into much more of the cosmic and more sort of deeper mysteries sort of out that, that are deeper than just earth here and now. It's sort of like a lot bigger as a picture. But because we're learning to, to work and journey within sort of earth realm and human consciousness, it's really safe for people. It's really familiar because it's just where you hang out normally in a body and with nature. So people tend to really let themselves relax into it. Their, their senses often really open and relax into that because it's just, it's, you know, hanging out with trees, as you said, is so there's something really nourishing about that relationship and something in us really, really knows them. Whereas doing that with alien beings is a bit more of a leap for people and they are somewhat a bit more, because it's unfamiliar, um, it can be easier for people to really relax into the tracking and the journeying with earth stuff first. Not everyone, some people are more aligned with, you know, 10th dimensional beings and aliens and that's cool too. You know, that that's probably, that's probably works for different people like that. But yeah, I've noticed that it definitely deepens people in their, in their capacities. All right. Thank you so much, Chris, um, for joining us today on Two Shamans and a Muggle edition, Chris edition for Consciousness Unleashed podcast. <laughs> and um, everything that we talked about today, all the links I'll be putting below in the description. So I'll also include links to um, Chris's page, his accelerator page, where if you actually want to talk, do you do 15 minute free consultations still, right, Chris? Yep. Yes. Okay. So I'll be leaving links to all of that. If you want to book sessions with Chris, if you want to sign up right away for Awaken the Shaman, all links will be below. Please subscribe to YouTube because we're going to have more video content about um, Awaken the Shaman. And hopefully Chris, I'll get Chris to 
make some solo videos where he's talking about some of these um, to really help you understand how this will really benefit your life by taking this course. And uh, for those listening on Apple and Spotify, please leave us a review. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Bye.